Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about finding the domain for this square root of x squared minus 9, okay? And I actually prepared for this problem for some time, but I didn't get a chance to do it. And recently a subscriber asked me this question, this exact same question, so I I would say that, okay, so now I should actually just do it, right? So let's get started. The idea is the same for finding the domain for a square root for a function involving a square root is really because we just need to make sure that the stuff inside the square root will be non-negative. Non-negative means that we can set up an inequality saying that x squared minus nine is greater than or equal to zero. Why do we require to be greater than or equal to zero? Because if we have a quantity that is negative inside the square root, then we get imaginary. Okay, to solve this inequality, to find all the x values that will satisfy this inequality, then what we do is that we can factor this expression. How do we factor? We can actually, let's just recall. That expression, the x squared minus 9, is actually the difference of two squares. So you can write it as a squared minus b squared. I mean, you can actually write a squared minus b squared as a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so for this expression right here, we can see what x is, right? x is actually just a. And then what is what is b? b is 3 because b squared is 9. So let's write it down. So a is actually just x and then b is what? b is the 3. So as you can see that a squared becomes x squared, b squared becomes 9, right? So now we can factor. So factoring this, then we are going to get a product of 2 binomials which would be well a is x and b is 3 so a plus b x plus 3 so you just get x plus 3 and the other factor would be a minus i mean x minus 3 so now we have this factor so what happened is that we can actually find endpoints so if we are solving this inequality we can find endpoints easily so how do we find the endpoints so let's write it down so endpoints Okay, would be simply just setting each factor equal to zero. So if you set x plus three equal to zero, so x plus three is being set equal to zero, then we simply will just get x equals what? Uh, negative three, okay? And then x minus three equal to zero, and then you solve for uh, x, then you get x equals three. So we are getting the two endpoints right here. And once we get the two endpoints, then we are actually ready to, uh, to start making the sign analysis chart. So let's just do that right here. So this is the x-axis. So it's a horizontal axis. And then we have this. And then now we are going to put those two endpoints on the lumber line. So we are going to put that negative three right here and then positive three here. Remember, the smaller lumber should be on the left side of the larger lumber. So now we have those two endpoints separating the whole lumber line into three intervals. So this one, this one, this one. Okay, so some uh, all the values are less than negative three, values between negative three and three, and then values greater than three. So now we just need to do the um, testing points. And then you may say, how do we do that? Just pick a number that belongs to the interval, and then we plug it back into the original inequality and check whether that will satisfy the inequality. In this case, you can actually just make it even easier because we have zero on the other side. So that means we only need to check the sign. We don't even need to bother with the calculation. So uh, for example, if we pick a number between negative three and three, what is something that's easy to deal with? Well, of course it would be zero. So just pick an easy number. You can pick one, you can pick two, pick negative one, doesn't matter, right? So just pick zero. Okay, so if you pick zero and then uh, you plug it back in here, uh, depending on the situation, sometimes this one is easier. Sometimes the factor form is easier. It's up to you, right? So as long as it's the, uh, the original inequality, then it will be okay. So pick the zero in here, you get zero squared minus nine, right? So you are going to get a what? A negative number, right? So you just get negative number. So we can simply just write down the result right here. It would be, it would be a negative number. So or you can plug it back in here. So zero plus three is positive. Zero minus three is a negative. So positive times negative gives you negative. So you are going to get the same result. Now, the other ones, you can pick uh, anything that's greater than three. So usually you may say, so we just pick the four. Yes, four will work. But oftentimes I will just pick something that's like quite big. As long as it's in the domain, then it will be okay. So let's say if I pick 1000, then it would be nice. And then you may say, why 1000? Because think about this. If I put 1000 in here, 1000 square, that will give you a big number, subtract the nine. Remember, I don't really care about what the number is equal to. I only care about the sign if it's greater than zero or less than zero. So I know that if it's, if it's positive, then 
Well, yeah, so I can put the positive sign right here. So that would be 1000, right? Square minus nine. So that's guaranteed to be positive. And then do the same thing on the other side. So we are going to just get pick the, uh, well, negative 1000, right? So pick negative 1000. You square the negative 1000, you're still going to get a positive big number, subtracting the nine, then you are going to get the positive. So it would be positive here. I actually used the wrong color that I wasn't planning to use that, but then let me just erase this part right here. It actually doesn't really matter, right? So we only need to just indicate the sign, then it will be okay. So once we get that, okay, then we can ask ourselves, uh, which interval of x values will satisfy the inequality? Well, we want that to be greater than or equal to zero. So what does that mean? That means we want the positive intervals. So those two are the ones that we want. So we are going to just shade the whole interval here and then do the same thing for the other side. Is that okay? So we shade those. And then you may say, what about uh, the endpoint? Well, there is an equal sign right here. So that means we can actually put a solid dot at those. Now that's the, uh, those are the intervals that we want. So we can, we are actually ready to write down the domain of this function in the interval notation. So what do we get here? So let's write down the final answer. What is that? Well, based on this interval here. So we start from the far left, that means legged infinity. And make sure that you use parentheses for legged infinity. So legged infinity all the way to the three, right? So you, I mean the legged three, so you get legged three here. And then because we get a solid dot, so we got to use brackets, meaning that we are including the legged three. And then union, and then, well, this one is the one that we don't want. So we will start from the three. So we put the three here. Okay, so starting from the three and then we go all the way to the far right. That means we are going to get the positive infinity. So that would be our final answer. Is that okay? So hope this video will help you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. I will see you next time.